Again, we are so grateful that you are watching us live and uh, joining our devotional. We have some people who are listening to us via phone conference. Um, I want to just welcome you again to Emmanuel Baptist Church teaching moment where we are saved to serve and we are sharing the joy of Jesus Christ. I want to thank uh, hundreds of you who tuned in on Wednesday evenings to watch our live video teaching. And what we seek to do in many ways is to allow God's word to speak to you through the teaching of his word. Every year at Emmanuel, we normally have a theme, and last year's theme was developing insight above eyesight. This year's theme is understanding the times based on 1 Chronicles. It says that the men of Issachar was wise, and they understood the time. We understand that the Bible is very clear as it um, speaks to the issues of time. We know that when you look at the Bible, it talks about chronos time and kairos. Chronos deals more with minutes and moments, or minutes more or less, seconds. Kairos deals with an appointed time or an opportune time. For instance, the Bible says that in the fullness of time meant that there was a moment that God had sovereignly planned, preordained that would take place. God sent forth his son, Jesus Christ. That happened in the fullness of time. And then when you look at um, if the book of Ecclesiastics, it talks about a set time. Um, it says in Ecclesiastes 3, to everything, there is a time and a season and a purpose up under the sun. So when you think about it, you look at the world, um, it talks about the different dispensations of time. And we are dealing with now the dispensation of grace. There was a time we called the dispensation of innocence when there was no sin in the world. Then when you go to the book of Revelations, we talk about the end times. So the Bible is filled with talking about Kairos moments of time. Um, I love, there's a quote that I was reading by Rick Warren about time that says, time is your most precious gift because you only have a set time or a set amount of it. He said, when he talks about our life and the expand of our life, he said, time is your most precious gift. Outside of your salvation, you only have a set amount of time. And so since we only have a set amount of time. I read a quote by Charles Spurgeon that says, serve God by doing common actions in a heavenly spirit. And then if your daily calling only leaves you a crack and crevice of time, fill them up with holy service. Uh, Charles Spurgeon is telling us to use our time to try to please God. And by the fact, it is our responsibility as Christians to recognize what time it is. When you talk about that uh, Greek word kairos that Paul talks about in Philippians, I'm sorry, in Ephesians 5, when 16, when he tells us to redeem the time, he's talking really about a measure of time. A large or a small portion of time, um, a fixed time or a period of time. So when I think through where we are as it relates to time, I want you to remember this. We all get time, but we don't all get the same results. God gives each one of us a certain amount of time, 
but we don't always get the same results with the time we have. Now, that makes me raise the question, why is it if we all get time, we all don't get the same results with a certain amount of time we have? Why is it that some people do well with their time and some people don't do well with their time? Well, you know, I said uh, Sunday, and I think I need to say this again, it's because according to um, Ephesians 5 and 15, some of us are careless with our time. Because in Ephesians 5 and 15, he talks about walking circumspectly with our time, walking carefully with our time. But you know the opposite of careful is careless. And you wonder why your children don't get the same results and each one of them have the same amount of time. Churches don't get the same results and some of us have a certain amount of time. People don't get the same results. You have to ask yourself the question, listen, what are you doing with your time? Now, in Psalms 90, Moses says to us, one of the things we ought to do in Psalms 90 and 12, he said we need to pay attention to our time. We need to pay attention to our time. And I want to say this to you. You need to pay attention to time because Moses says in Psalms 90 and 12, teach us to number our days so that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Now, note what Moses is saying. Wisdom helps you to see life through the lenses of God. You will not pay attention to time if you are disconnected from spending time with God. I think I just said something. You will not pay attention to God's time if you are disconnected with spending time with God. And you know, a lot of us, uh, we spend time doing a whole lot of things that, listen to me closely, that, um, that we want to do. I remember, I remember, I remember when I would go to school early in the morning um, and before school, guess what I would do? I would get there early enough to play basketball on the playground. Now, this was before school started. Before I got to school, I would get, listen, I, I would leave home early enough to meet my friends so I can play ball before school started. You know why? Because I really wasn't preparing for the test that I had at 9 o'clock. What I was preparing for is time to play around and have fun. And most of us, we have time. But we don't take the test serious in life. But we do prepare for the time we have to play around and to have fun. Now Moses said, teach us to number our days so that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. How do you prepare your heart for wisdom if you don't know how to use your time? Let me give you this. Number one for the day. You get wisdom by seeking God. And James 1 and 5 says, if any of you lack wisdom, that means the discernment. To be able to look at your life and to understand that God expects you to use it wisely. James tells you and I, we can go to God in 2021 and ask him to give us wisdom, watch this, on how to manage our life because we can't manage time. I'll tell you why. Time gonna keep moving whether you manage it or not. But what you can manage is your life. And James 1 and 5 says, listen, if you lack the, the spiritual capacity to do what Moses told you to do is number your days so that you may apply, notice that word, apply your heart to wisdom. If you lack the spiritual capacity to do it, James says how you're able to do it is to go to God and ask God to help you. Now, what happens when God begins to help you uh, in some ways manage your time wisely. You know, when you really, really, really think through it, what happens is that God begins to change your focus from a earthly perspective of dealing with time to a heavenly perspective. How does he do it? Here's what the Apostle Paul says uh, in 2 Corinthians 4.18. So we do not focus on what is seen, but on what is unseen. 
For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Here's what wisdom does. Wisdom shifts your focus on what God is doing behind what you see that is going on in your everyday life. Let me say it again. Paul was talking about here in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Reverend Nichols just preached on it last week. He was talking about uh, uh, troubled on every side, yet not forsaken, cast down. If you start at verse 7 and read on to verse number uh, 18, but not destroyed. You know, he was saying, even though we're hard pressed on every side, and that word hard pressed in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 means, he says, I'm hemmed in. It's like I'm trapped in a corner. He says, I'm not looking at what's going on outwardly. I'm looking at what's going on behind the pressure that I'm dealing with. That's how you begin to manage time, y'all. Oftentimes, we are distracted by what's in front of us. And we don't see God's hand that's behind what's in front of us. So today, when you talk about managing your time, paying attention to time, Psalms um, 90 and 12, uh, applying our hearts unto wisdom, you can't find wisdom unless you ask God, James 1 and 5. And when you ask God, what God begins to do is help you to get a heavenly perspective versus your earthly perspective. Let me give you another look as you talk about the reason why we need to try to um, listen, use our time wisely and understand the time. Why would Moses say pay attention to the time? Why would James says ask for wisdom about the time? Why would Paul says shift your, your perspective and focus on looking at what God is doing versus what man is doing? Why would he say that? Here's why he says it. Because tomorrow is not promised. It is no guarantee that you're going to have tomorrow to get done what you need to get done with the time God gives you today. A lot of us let time get by us on today because we think that we got time tomorrow. Let me tell you something. Time is not promised to no one on tomorrow. And you may not be able to do tomorrow what you need to do today because tomorrow's problems may be so deep. Only thing you can focus on is what's in front of you. Now, here's the scripture that kind of backs it up. Proverbs 27 and 1 says, do not boast about tomorrow. For you, you do not know what a day may bring. You know why you need to manage your time today? Because you don't know what tomorrow brings. And most people say, well, I got tomorrow to change. I got tomorrow to get started. Not necessarily. James chapter 4, verse 13 and 14. He says, listen. You who say today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a town and stay there a year and conduct business and make money. You do not know what tomorrow will bring. This is why today, y'all, God is calling us to use our time wisely. To connect with our families fervently. To do our work for him passionately. And to love him enough to go deeply in our spiritual walk with him. You know why? Because tomorrow I just may wake up in eternity. Tomorrow, something may happen whereby I don't even know whether or not I'm here. Tomorrow, the people that you love and you know you ought to get it right with them today, they may be gone. So you ought to not mismanage the time God has blessed you with for today. I close with this verse as it we relate to time. Proverbs 
21 and 5 says, the plans of the diligent leads only to poverty. But everyone who is hasty comes only to poverty. The plans of the diligent leads only to plenty. I'm sorry. The plans of the diligent leads only to plenty. But everyone who's hasty comes only to poverty. Let me challenge you to serve God diligently with your time. Because the plans, I like that verse, of the diligent leads to plenty. And that ain't just talking about materialism. You want plenty of joy? Be diligent in spending time with God. You want plenty of peace? Be diligent with spending time with God. You want plenty of love. I just left a counseling appointment out of my office before I came in here with a young person who, who somewhat suicidal, overwhelmed, about to have a breakdown, and I had to turn to the scripture to remind her that the Bible says that, that, that they were the children of God and God has lavishly put his love on them. And so if you feel like nobody else loves you, God loves you, but you won't know that if you don't spend time with him. So stop talking about tomorrow. I'm going to make up my mind to do the right thing. Hey, do you want eternity for tomorrow? If you die, well, guess what? Now is the time. Today is the appointed time. It is the acceptable time to give your life to the Lord. If you want to do that right where you are, and I'm done with the small devotional for the day, if you want to do that, God can change your life today as it relates to your destiny or where you're going to spend eternity at with him. If you settle today with the time you have, I'm going to give my life to the Lord today. He'll save you today. Would you ask him if you've never accepted Jesus, if you're listening to me, if you're watching tonight, would you ask him, would you say, Lord, I admit that I'm a sinner. I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins, and I want to give my life to him today. You know why you ought to do that? Because the psalmist says your time is in his hand anyway. And because your time is in his hand, he's just waiting for you to call. He'll say, Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, that's my devotional for the day. Use your time wisely. Ask God for wisdom. Stop procrastinating. Tomorrow's not promised. And if you seek him today, he'll give you a plan on tomorrow. God bless you all.